Okay, welcome to a concluding video on solving systems of linear equations and two variables. Um, this is our systems 1.4 video on where the lines meet, and this is putting it all together. The past few videos have gone over what a system of linear equations is, what its solution is, and the three different methods for solving systems of linear equations. The three methods we went over in those other videos were graphing. You can solve equations by graphing, substitution, and elimination. This video has one purpose, for you to be able to look at a systems of linear equations and then to say, hey, I, sh I need to use graphing or I need to use substitution, simply to be able to identify which method is the best one for a given system. We're not actually going to solve systems. We're simply going to look at them and based on how they look and how they're set up, we're going to identify which is the best approach and then we'll, we'll briefly talk about why but we're not going to actually solve them. If you want to learn how to solve systems by those specific methods, graphing, elimination, etc., then check out the prior videos. Once you get on the test, of course, you see systems and usually your teacher's not going to tell you which method to use. That's up for you to determine and there really are some easy to identify traits that'll let you know which system, which, um, which method to use. So I wrote system A, B, and C up here and each one of them requires, a, you know, lends itself to one of the methods we looked at before. Let's look at this. Which method does system A lend itself toward? Is there anything about this system that sticks out, especially in light of some prior tutorials we've already done together? Hopefully, you're noticing that we have this right here, negative 10y plus 10y. This fact that we had additive inverses was a core feature of the elimination method. And if we add these two equations, notice what we get. Negative 6x plus 4x is negative 2x. 0y equals negative 8 and then we can solve for x and get x equals 4. If we want to know the value of y, we of course can substitute the x in to either equation. So, what is it about elimination? What you want to look for is in a, your two equations that can easily be added or subtracted or manipulated somehow to eliminate one variable. So whenever you see like plus 10y minus 10y, it's begging for elimination. Um, now let's look at system C actually. Let's look at that next. Y equals 2x plus 5. Y equals negative 1 half x minus 1. Notice both of these equations are, are look very different from the ones on the left. And both of these equations are in slope intercept form. Slope intercept form equations are very easy to graph. Unless you have something like meta calculator that can graph any equation. Um, these are very easy to form, uh, to graph and you can punch them right into your calculator to get the solutions or you can actually just graph them out to get the solution. So I'm not actually going to do that, but I'm just going to point out that if two, cis two lines are both in slope intercept form, it's likely that it would be easy to get their solution by simply graphing it and looking at the graph. Now this, hmm. here we've got something with x's and y's on one side and y equals stuff on, on the bottom. Now, if you remember, this was what was a defining trait of substitution. Since we know what y equals, wherever we see a y in the other equation, we can put 3x plus 10. So, whenever you see a y equals blah blah blah, or x equals a whole bunch of other stuff, substitution is the way to go. And we'll do the first step here to clarify that. You can write negative 2x plus 4 instead of y we're going to write 3x plus 10, right, because we're going to substitute that in to the top equation equals 30 and we are in a situation where we have one equation with one unknown. In other words we can solve for x and get its value. Of course once we get that x 
like in system A, we substitute the x in to get the y value. So quick recap of what we're looking for for the three different strategies. If something can easily be add added, like the y's or the x's, and eliminated, go for elimination. Look for things like positive 10y minus 10y. If two equations are in slope-intercept form, they're easy to graph, either by hand or by a calculator, and you want to use the graphing method. If you have one equation as y equals 3x plus 10, or a bunch of x's and 10 and numbers, and the other one looks is not that way, notice the difference between b and c is that this is y equals a bunch of stuff, and this is y equals a bunch of stuff, so they can easily be graphs in certain slope-intercept form. On the left, we have y equals 3x plus 10. That's in slope-intercept form. However, this one here is not. It would take some work to change this equation into something like that on the right in slope-intercept form. So here, it's very easy to substitute y equals for this, 3x plus 10, and for that, and use substitution. Well, let's see if you can um, do the same for some other systems. Okay, let's look at these three systems. Negative 1 half x minus 5y equals 5, and y equals negative 4x minus 1. Well, we've got one equation in slope-intercept form, which means it's easy to graph, and we have another one that's not. So if you remember, this is a clue to use substitution. Because where we see y in the top equation, we can just put that. So you can end up with negative 1 half x minus 5 instead of y. It's going to be negative 4x minus 1 equals 5. One equation, one unknown. You can simplify this, solve for x. Once you have x, it's easy enough to find y. So again, when we have something in standard form, like on the top, and slope-intercept on the bottom, that's begging for substitution. Two equations, y equals slope-intercept form. You remember what that means, right? You can graph this pretty easily because both equations are, are in slope-intercept form. Here we've got something in slope-intercept form and then standard form where we have 6x minus 2y. Again, put the, substitute that in for the y and solve. Let's try some other examples. Maybe we'll make it a little more difficult in the next examples, because it's not always as easy and cut and dry as these examples. <coughs> okay, let's finish up with these last three systems. 7x minus 1 half y equals 30. 6x plus 1 half y equals 35. Hopefully you're getting good at recognizing this situation. We've got some nice additive inverses here. All we have to do is add these two equations and we have the very nice 13x equals 65. And once you have that, you of course can just solve for x, and we know the deal from there. So this is a big time elimination method. Here we've got y minus 3 equals 2 thirds x, and x equals 3y minus 1. So we've got x equals a bunch of y's and numbers, and that is just begging to be substitute it in here. So that you would end up with y minus 3 equals 2 thirds of, instead of x, we're going to write 3y minus 1. We have now got one equation, one unknown. We can solve for y in this time, in this case. Once we know y, punch that back in to get the x value. So. This is a, a substitution question. Now, what do you think about this one on the bottom that we're going to end with here? Um, neither equation is in slope-intercept form, right? So it's not a graphing question. This would be Both of these would require a lot of work to get them into slope-intercept form. Neither of these looks like x equals or y equals. So it's not really uh, at least lending itself easily towards substitution. And there's no easy way, to, you know, or it's not directly, obviously, like an additive inverse. We got 10 and negative 6, negative 3 and 7. So 
there's really I would rec honestly recommend either substitution or elimination either way requires some work if you want to do substitution you would have to solve for y in either case and resubstitute it in if you wanted to do elimination let's see what that would look like we would have to we want to get you know a situation where we have additive inverses like the same number before y and let's shoot for let's make um, let's do that actually let's try to eliminate y so if you remember from our elimination method video what we would do is we would multiply both equations by a certain number for instance 7 and 3, we want that, them to be the same number. I'm thinking 21. All right, so what do we multiply the top by? 7 to get 70x minus 21y equals 32 times 7, which is 224. And we got negative 21y. We want positive 21y on the bottom, so we're going to multiply by 3. We're just going to distribute this out. equals 120. Now we've got our lovely additive inverses here and we can just add the two equations to get x equals. So when you add these two equations you get 52x equals 104. Easy enough to solve for x and then substitute that x value in for y as we've done so often with elimination and substitution. Okay so this last one is an example of an equation that isn't totally begging for any one ish one way. It's really not conducive to to graphing because you'd have to rewrite both equations. Elimination is fairly easy. We just need to choose our variable and get it. You know, y we targeted y and get it to the additive inverses. Substitution would also be doable. A little more work though because you'd have to solve for y bring the x over, divide by negative 3, and then substitute in. I think that's a little more work. So it's not always totally straightforward. But that is going to wrap it up for our uh, videos on solving systems of linear equations. Um, remember, you can always check meta-calculator.com to solve any system of equations in any form. And I'll wrap it up with one last um, look at meta-calculator. Okay, you just go to meta-calculator.com, and if you want to solve systems of equations, of course you could graph them. Um, this is a great calculator, and, and it graphs things in any form, like y minus 4 equals 3x. It could graph. This is y minus 4 equals 3x, but what we really want to use is the scientific calculator. Scientific calculator equation solver and we can enter any two equations in here in any form and double check if we um, if we solve the equation correct for instance we can put in the two equations we were just looking at and hit our handy solve button and we'll find the solution okay so that's it on solving systems of linear equation check out the website mathwarehouse.com slash system and that's it for now. Thank you.